Greetings, greetings everyone. It is your brother Leon the Servant back here with another video on this Yah blessed day. Kahala to the Abba. Right? So now we address the formalities. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. So my last video, my last stream, I spoke about man merging with, with machine. And at the end of that, I spoke about a little bit about the metaverse. I want to expand about the metaverse. Um, NFTs and what that could possibly mean for us moving forward in the future right so it's interesting how this news is about about a month to three weeks old give or take but the proclamations that were made is very bold and I think very pressing so it's interesting how we are still, as I said in the former video, progressing towards this man and machine or, or augmented reality, virtual reality, merging with seamlessly our day-to-day -day perceptions, right? I want to share some excerpts from two sources. Um, and also I want to share a, a small news article along with some scripture to provide some perspective on what this can truly entail for us. So for those who don't know, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, the owner of Facebook and if I'm correct, Instagram as well, has decided to rebrand and he's rebranding his company to the Meta or Metaverse, right? And in this Metaverse, there's going to be a lot of changes, essentially. Now, he proclaims that all his apps will be the same, but what he is trying to brand out towards is vastly different. And it's very interesting because for people who grew up around my time and is around my age, they understand that there's books about this and there's uh, videos and video games and anime right that speak about what practically he's trying to do it also feels like a prequel to the matrix so let me first explain what I'm talking about for those who don't know there is an anime or a uh, Japanese cartoon it's called sword art online and it was very popular when it came out. I think it came out around like 2012 or 2014, somewhere around there. And essentially, it was about a group of kids who was playing a game with a VR set. And their body was teleported to a virtual reality. And it's kind of like similar to what Mark Zuckerberg is proposing. But what was interesting is that when they got teleported to this one game, Sword Art, online that they couldn't leave the game they got trapped in and practically they died there they died in real life because of some issues with the uh, VR headset and I'm not saying that that's necessarily going to be the issue or case with metaverse I'm not here to disparage anyone or to cause rumors but it's just very odd it's very strange um, I once had a book and I can't remember the name of it. I'll probably drop it down in the description box uh, about something very similar along the same lines of that anime. Um, and this seems like the prequel to the Matrix. Right? It just seems like this is how the Matrix started. Like they had to put an origin point. An origin point to this. And this just seems like, well. One day this adventure came with this and it just hypnotized everyone to just do this day in and day out <laughs> type of situation. But um, let, um, let's let have Mark speak for himself for a short period of time. Uh, once again, everything will be in the description box uh, and let's play it. Let's see what he has to say. remains 
remains the same. It's still about bringing people together. Our app. He states that his mission is the same and is about bringing people together. All right. My question would be this. Where are we being brought to? All right. Where is our meeting point? Is it physically together? Is it mentally together? Is it spiritually on the same accord together? That is the question. How are we being gathered? Let's listen on. So their brands, they're not changing either. Still, the company that designs technology around people. Hey, and welcome to Connect. Today, we're going to talk about the metaverse, starting with the most important experience of all connecting with people. All right. Imagine you put on your glasses or headset and you're instantly in your home space. It has parts of your physical home recreated virtually. It has things that are only possible virtually. Another key instance is that practically, like I said earlier, a seamless transition. He said he's uh, proposing a proposition of being able to teleport, at least your mind, somewhere. He said, hey, imagine you could put on your glasses and boom, you're at home. You know, you could probably be, let's say, on a subway or at work or wherever have you be, right? It's so seamless that you feel as though you're actually at home. It feels like you've been teleported or transported, right? It feels like a gateway has been opened, right? Once again, this video is just to propose some questions and to propose a possible future, right? Nothing's set in stone, but there's definitely some things to be wary of, right? As I spoke about previously, that social media has been used as a device to captivate a lot of young minds and have destroyed a lot of communication uh, possibilities, right? It is a known factor. A lot of psychological studies have been done that people are a lot less social than they were the last 20 years. Um, bad with manners, bad with etiquette, just overall just head, bumping heads and cannot meet uh, disagreeances civil, um, civilly, right? Um, I want to, before we even continue, I want you to remember this verse, right? That's First Peter 5, uh, uh, verse 8 it says be sober all right be vigilant because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion walketh about and seeing who he may devour now when it's talking about being sober and vigilant remember being in inebriated or being high or being drunk or being under the influence it distorts your reality it distorts your perception let that sink in this augmented reality, this virtual reality, distorts your perception. You cannot make sound judgment if you cannot perceive your surroundings, right? How can you be vigilant if they can put something and it pacify you, right? So, also, another thing I want to bring up about Meta, and this seems to also be targeted to a lot of gamers, right? as my previous examples of other things that I said about Sword Art Online and the book that is escaping my memory. I will definitely put it down in the description box when I find it. Um, the word meta, let's, let's go over it real quick. It means denoting a change of position or condition, right? It can also mean, let's scroll down a little bit. Let's move that. It can also mean this, right? Uh, denoting a compound formed by dehydration, denoting something of a higher or second order kind, denoting position behind, after, and beyond. Right? So, it's talking about a change. Right? It's talking about a shift. Right? 
And something that's very interesting in the gaming community, right, is that the word meta means something that is very strong and a powerful method that is used, right? So, for instance, the uh, easiest way to make that in layman's terms is like chess and how there's different strategies that's applied. And let's say if one person make said strategy, the other strategy to combat that would be the meta or it would be the most applicable, efficient way to overcome said obstacle. That's something to let that sink in. Let's go back to the video. Now, in this video, he's choosing, he's creating his avatar and changing his outfit. And now he's seamlessly joining other people in this augmented reality, this virtual world. Right? And I want to skip down. And it just a few seconds forward, and you, in this video you see um, people calling in, right? And you can see their actual face; they're not avatars like everyone else is. And listen to what these women say that's happening out in the city. So this is not just in your own private home, but they're trying to make this more like a they live situation, and not just that. When you look at the movie They Live not just okay you can see the demons and you can see the lies but more like the idea of that there has been something else implanted in the world that is not necessarily seen by the naked eye that you need ai to help you see let's get into it sorry i'm running late but you gotta see what we're checking out there's an artist going around soho hiding ar pieces for people to find all right so just to make just to reiterate make sure everyone heard what it was said is that there is ar uh images and art hidden around the city for people to seek out and find right once again trying to merge and make this seamless now here's the issue that i have with this right because um we're warned about prophecy in the latter days and you know a lot of people understand that we are in the latter days but may not understand what why the issue with the metaverse well i spoke to you previously about not being sober all right now i want you to also listen to this right in matthew 24 right and we will start from 37 and we will read down to 44 and it says this be as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, there was eating and drinking, marrying and giving into marriage until the day of Noah, Noah um, entered the ark. Right? So everything seemed normal. Or you could say that there was a perversion of all normal things, right, with wickedness. Let's keep going. And it says, And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill and the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not the hour your Lord doeth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come he would have watched and would have not suffered his house to be broken up see if this metaverse is to distort a reality and distort the current perception that we have how can you properly keep watch how do you know what you're actually seeing i mean if this is to merge imagination with 
actualization or what's actually happening with the actual reality, right? Then how can you tell the difference between the two? How your mind is in a state of sleep because you can't actually be vigilant. And it's just a, a way of saying, oh, all virtual technology is bad and yada, yada, yada. No. But I'm telling you that this could be definitely a lot, an easy way to rock a lot of people to sleep. All right. I want to bring up Proverbs real quick before we get back into it. All right. And it says this. First Proverbs chapter one, verse 24 through 31. And it says this. Because I have called and ye have refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regardeth. But ye have set at not at my counsel and would not of my reproof. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when you fear cometh. When you fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Right? For they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Most High. They would not of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of their fruit of their own way and fill with their own devices. Right? What's very interesting is because you a lot of people reject the Most High, right? They didn't listen to his reproof. You're going to have the fruit right and eat of their own way your own lust and you will be set to your own devices right which that goes back to the whole days of noah while everything seems to be in chaos there's a, a similitude of normalcy right while you are sucked and glued into your own devices as your only way of escape your only piece of solitude but even that solitude could be detrimental so, um, I want to pull up my next thing, and I want to talk about NFTs, right? I want to talk about NFTs. And this is, for those who don't know, this video does a decent explanation of it. Um, it's non-fungible uh, trade. Well, I think I said that wrong. Non-fungible tokens, or fungible. It's a weird word. All right, and let's let this video go on and I'll elaborate on this. How much would you pay for this artwork? In March 2021, this art piece created by digital artist Beeple sold for over $69 million, becoming one of the most expensive works of art ever sold at an auction. $69 million made by digital art. Listen to what follows. The catch? Doesn't exist yet. This art does not exist. Someone paid $69 million for art that technically does not exist. Let's keep going on. Not physically, at least. It's all thanks to a trend known as NFTs, or non fungible tokens. And in recent years, it's taken the art scene by storm. In 2018, I went to Christie's and essentially credited with bringing NFTs to the art world. Um, and what happened was I gave away 300 free NFTs. Now, fast forward three years, um, each of those 300 NFTs that we gave out as like a physical card that you could cash in are worth about a million dollars. This piece is called Knockout. It was actually the first piece that I painted during 2021. So now this is the most expensive NFT that I've sold to date. I paired it with this physical piece. I sold it for the equivalent of about $17,000 US. The market has seen explosive growth in 2021. During its third quarter, NFT trading volume hit $10.7 billion, a 723% gain from the previous quarter and a staggering gain of over 38,000% year over year. It's become um, something that was a bit of a novelty to something that's become a lot more mainstream very, very rapidly. And this is partially due to the fact that a lot of celebrities... It says Grimm sold six million worth kind of, of digital art. Tom, Tom Brady is launching an NFT company. Snoop Dogg just claimed to be a prominent NFT booster. Basically earning money and gaining value from 
cryptocurrencies. All right. And NFT, for those who are not aware, is a form of cryptocurrency that utilizes blockchain technology and is traceable, right? It is this distinct print that only you have that doesn't exist in the physical world. But here's an interesting catch is that in this metaverse, you can buy NFTs and sell NFTs. You can buy um, virtual property. They're truly trying to inseminate you into this world of fall fallacy and falsehood, right? And NFTs seem as a nice, easy way, and it's profitable, it seems, to bring in cryptocurrency, right? And not to mention that we have a certain, certain economical issues currently, right? And I also want to bring up this article. It says this, 12-year-old coder is set to earn over $400,000 after two months of selling NFTs, right? And I just wanted to say this is this is crazy. We're talking thousands of dollars of stuff that doesn't even actually exist into a computer, right? And it's not like you can take it out the computer or it serves an actual use. It's like having a trophy and it's not even a tangible tro trophy. The trophy is supposed to signify you winning something, you having something, you're, you being awarded something. But this trophy is digital. Oh, people say that doesn't devalue it. I mean, what do you actually have? They're selling you air. Seriously, I want to close this out with uh, this verse right here. It says this, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. All right? And once again, they have a million different things going on in the world. They have a thousand different agendas and this is just one of them. I'll be covering more of this in the future about NFTs and the metaverse and, and what could be a potential reality about them. But I thought this is information that should be getting out there. Um, the prequel to The Matrix, right? It's, this fits the build, man. On everything I could think about. Talking about, well, you know what? We can have people just settle for whatever reality we want. And we will brand it with convenience. We will brand it with entertainment. We will brand it with gain, with status. Right? Um, it's, it's astonishing. It really is. And people are starting to flock to it. People think it's a dope idea. Right? But it definitely has its drawbacks. For... It's, it's escapalism, or it's enabling escapalism, which makes you want to leave what is currently in front of you, the current problems in front of you, and put you in a happy, safe space where nothing can harm you, when you just run away from all your issues and all your problems. And sadly, that will make the demise for many. Let it not be you. With that being said, shalom and peace.